Good morning, grade 9. Today we will continue with chapter 7, Geometry. Please open your books on page 32 in order to solve number 5. In this exercise, in the given, we have in the figure below two circles, C1 and C2, of the same center O and their radii are R1 equal 2 cm and R2 equal 4 cm respectively. A straight line passing through O cuts C1 at F and A and cuts C2 at B and E. The tangent to circle C1 at A cuts the circle C2 at C and D. In part 1, we have to show that CD is the perpendicular bisector of OB. In order to prove that we have a perpendicular bisector, one of the methods is to prove that we have a perpendicular passing through the midpoint of a segment. And this perpendicular in this case would be the perpendicular bisector. OA equal R1 equal 2 centimeters. And OB equal R2 equal 4 centimeters. That means OA is equal to half OB. And in this case, A is the midpoint of the segment OB. And also we have CD perpendicular to OB at A, since CD is the tangent to circle C1 at the point A. So we have a perpendicular CD passing through the midpoint of OB, which is A. Therefore, CD is the perpendicular bisector of OB. In part 2, we have to determine the nature of the triangle OBC. We have OB equal OC equal R2. Since they are both radii in the circle C2. And OC equal BC since C is, is on the perpendicular bisector of OB. Any point on the perpendicular bisector is equidistant from the two extremities of the segment. Then OB equal OC equal BC. Therefore, OBC is equilateral since it has three equal sides. Before we continue with part three, let's take a note concerning the rhombus. By definition, a rhombus is a quadrilateral having congruent or equal sides. The properties of a rhombus are the opposite sides are parallel since the rhombus is a parallelogram. The diagonals intersect at their midpoint and they are perpendicular, and the diagonals are the bisectors of the angles. Now let's take some conditions so that a quadrilateral would be a rhombus. The first condition, a quadrilateral would be a rhombus if it has four congruent or equal sides. The second condition, it is a parallelogram having two consecutive congruent sides. The third condition, it is a parallelogram having perpendicular diagonals. Now let's get back to part three. Show that the quadrilateral OCBD is a rhombus. We have OC equal BC since C is, is on the perpendicular bisector of OB. And we have OC equal OD equal R2 and OD equal BD since D is on the perpendicular bisector of OB. Then we can deduce that OC equal BC equal OD equal BD. Therefore, OCBD is a rhombus since it has four equal sides. Part 4. Let P be the midpoint of CE. Part A. We have to calculate OP and deduce that P belongs to the circle C1. In triangle EBC, we have O midpoint of BE since BE is a diameter of the circle C2 and P 
is the midpoint of CE from the given. Then we can deduce that OP is parallel to BC and OP equal half BC from the mid-segment theorem in triangle EBC. Then OP is equal to 1 over 2 times 4 since BC equal OC equal R2 equal 4 centimeters since OBC is equilateral. Therefore, OP equal 2 centimeters. We still have to deduce that P belongs to the circle C1. Since OP is equal to 2 centimeters and it is equal to R1, since R1 from the given is 2 centimeters, then we can deduce that P belongs to the circle C1. In part B, we have to show that D, O, and P are collinear. We have OD is parallel to BC since OCBD is a rhombus. And we have OP parallel to BC proved in 4A. So we have two lines that are parallel to the same line BC and they have a common point O. Then we can deduce that D, O, and P are collinear. In part C, we have to show that OP is perpendicular to CE and we have to deduce that CE is tangent to the circle C1. We have BC perpendicular to CE since BCE is inscribed in a semicircle of diameter BE, so BCE is a right triangle at C. And we have OP parallel to BC, and this is proved in part 4A. Then we can deduce that OP is perpendicular to CE. If two lines are parallel, then every perpendicular to one of them is perpendicular to the other. And we have OP radius in the circle C1 since P belongs to the circle C1 and OP is perpendicular to CE at P. So CE is perpendicular to a radius at the point P. Therefore, CE is tangent to the circle C1 at the point P. In part D, we have to show that CO is perpendicular to DE. In triangle ECD, we have EA height relative to CD passing through O since CD is tangent to the circle C1 at A from the given. And DP is the height relative to CE passing through O since OP is perpendicular to CE. Then O is the orthocenter of triangle ECD. Therefore, CO is perpendicular to DE as it is the third height in triangle ECD. In part 5, we have to show that the triangle EBC is an enlargement of the triangle EOP, and we have to precise the center and the ratio of this enlargement. In order to prove that EBC is an enlargement of the triangle EOP, we have to prove that they are two similar triangles. So first of all, let's consider the two triangles EBC and EOP. In these two triangles we have BEC equal OEP since it is a common angle and BCE equal OPE equal 90 degrees, then EBC and EOP are similar. We still have to write the ratio of similarity in order to calculate the ratio of this enlargement. We put the two triangles EBC and EOP and we write the ratio of similarity EB over EO equal EC over EP equal BC over OP equal 4 over 2 since BC equal to 4 and OP equal to 2, 4 over 2 equal 2. Then EBC is an enlargement of EOP since they are similar. The center of this enlargement is E since E is the common vertex of the two triangles EBC and EOP and the ratio of this enlargement is 2. Please don't forget to write the exercise in this video on your notebooks and to review the exercise. Thank you so much for listening.